Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to a brand new video. Today we're going to talk about how I got funded again. A couple of weeks ago, I made a video that was this one, where I passed my funding challenge in two trades. Now we're some weeks later and I've also passed the verification. So the account got funded. I'll be going over some of the trades I took on the verification in order to pass this challenge. I'll be going over psychology I had during this verification because I went on a drawdown period and I think this video will be really valuable for you guys so make sure you watch till the end. If you're excited for this one don't forget to leave a like down below, don't forget to subscribe if you're new and let's get into the video. Okay guys as you can see we're in the dashboard of my forex funds and um, this is the firm I use to pass my challenge. This is the firm I would recommend if you're just starting out or you can check out FTMO. Those are the two firms I have experience with. I can't talk for the other ones. So as you can see, we had 35 days left. We had 21K because it's also 20K challenge. That was from this video. Evaluation phase two demo passed. Profit target passed. As you can see right here, I got into a big drawdown. I got into a losing streak and... Um, because I was trading a challenge, I was trading it separately for my fund accounts, thank God. But that's also, that's something with my psychology that I was like, ah, this is just a challenge, this is just for YouTube, you know, it doesn't really matter, it is just a 20k. That might have played a role into getting into this big drawdown, and I got into a losing streak, also with my fund accounts, but not as big as this. I had a lot, a lot, a lot. I've shared some on my YouTube where I was just tapped out by the pip. When you get tapped out by the pip, and then it goes straight to your take profit, it does something with your psychology, I'm not gonna lie. But not only that, it is still a loss. Um, and that counts to your account balance okay let's take some trades that i took during this challenge and by the way guys i'm not going to show you only the winning trades i'm also going to show you the losing trades because i'm just taking you with me on a backtesting journey from my accounts it is something that i do every single time i take a challenge or every time i take a verification challenge i backtest what went wrong and what went good that is something i would highly advise you to do as well to backtest your accounts and to backtest the trades that you have taken so let's get into this okay guys this is the first trade i took I took it at, I think, this entry level. Oh, I cannot see my entry levels on my Forex ones. Okay, it doesn't matter. It will probably be something here. Yes, it was at, I think my trade at 8.24. So it is this candle. If I see the setup, I see that I would have taken this fair value gap based off this momentum, based off the lows being taken out. But when I look at it now, we had this momentum that I completely ignored. So this will be probably, definitely be a sell. So a stop loss would probably be enough here, right here. And we'll take profit something around here it was the trade that i took as you can see it went further down to a sell side which was quite logically because we filled this gap right here with this move then we filled this gap right here with this move we've made a lower high a lower low lower high lower low it couldn't be more clear than this setup right here but i don't know i don't know what i was doing at that moment maybe i've woken up too late or i didn't do my market outlooks something like that Anyway, my mind was definitely off at this point because this was a very, very nice and easy bearish trade. Anyway, let's go to the next one. It was the next day also on EURUSD. And bear with me, guys. I'm coming to these big winner trades in a second. And But I want to also show you losing trades and how I look back at them and what you can learn from your losing trades. Because studying your losers is like more important than studying your winners. Um, don't get me wrong, studying your winners is also really important. But if you study your losers, you can see what you did wrong and you can see what you can improve on. And what you can do better next time it was at 8 15 so it was this candle right here and it was a, a sell oh my god what was i doing it was a sell <laughs> it is so funny if, if, if this has been a while when you took trades on that on that certain account that you're back testing and then you, you then you go back into the charts with like not the new knowledge but like the new vision you have and then you see like what the hell was i doing why did i didn't do this and back then did i have my report card or not no i don't i think i don't anyway since i've been using the report cards from my playbook that i that i made that you can download in the link in the description but since i've been using that i can see where it went wrong that certain day because then i can see even okay i slept five hours i slept seven hours so it's not sleep but if i slept five hours might be something to do with sleep okay i did not eat well okay might be something to do with not eating well because these are things that we don't focus on we don't think that it has an influence on our trading but it definitely has i can't say this enough we are our own assets like a professional sports professional athletes these people are their own assets i've read something like this if like a marathon runner or a sprinter or something like that if he sleeps like two hours less his endurance will be minus 10 percent or minus 20 percent i don't know if that's correct i'm just throwing numbers out there but it was something in this way and that is that is that is major that is huge so why wouldn't affect sleep and eating and everything our minds and our capabilities 
to make decisions in the markets. So that's really important that you're going to start to focus on every single thing and every single aspect of your life. Okay, so 8.15, that was this trade and I took a sell. Maybe I took an impulse sell because of this candle right here. Let's see, let's go to the five minutes. I legit don't know why I took this trade. I legit can't tell you. Maybe I took like a fair value gap. Mm, it was this one. I took a fair value gap on the two minutes. I took this one, I took this trade. Then I would probably have something done like this. Yeah, TP doesn't matter, um, but this was probably my trade. So why did I do this? Probably because I thought, okay, this low has been broken. He rejected on the two minute order block. But when I look back at it now, it didn't really reject, it overlapped. Um, and then I went down and took out this low, but I went up a lot higher immediately after that. Because this was not a break of structure. Once the shards had break in this low, it would be a break of structure, but not right now. Let's see how we could have made this trade better. Let's go to the five minutes. So you have a fair value gap right here. We have this all this bullish momentum. We have higher lows, higher highs. So you're in an uptrend. We've broken this high. We've broken this high. So we have a market shift right here. We have a bullish trend. As you can see, fair value gap right here. Entry right here. Bam. Stop loss underneath the imbalance candle or underneath your swing low. It doesn't really matter. You target your high, bam, and you have your one over three trade almost. And if you took it like this, this is how I'm always taking my trades. For like the same trade, we have a one over seven instead of a one over 2.8. Okay, let's get to the next one. And I'll skip some of these losers right now because as I said, most of them had something to do with like breaking my rules. I took them early, I took them too late. I took them on like a different time frame than I usually take them. But I just want to show you that I'm just as you. I don't always win. I have losing streaks and I have drawdown periods in challenge accounts and in verification accounts and in funded accounts even. That is just part of the game. But you need to improve yourself to the point where you where you minimize that. And I'm, I'm also still in the process where I could improve a lot to minimize my drawdown, to minimize my exposure. These things are really important. And when you're 4% down in a drawdown, your psychology is not going to be the best. So when that happens, just scale back on your position, just risk less and give yourself and buy yourself more time in order to climb out of this drawdown. You have 60 days in the verification. That's, that's, that's really a lot. Just make use of that. Okay, I'm going to go fast forward to some of my winning trades because I think this video is getting really long already and I'm just like waffling about everything that I see. Okay, we're at the 25th of October. This was the day where I made 5%, I believe. So we had a position that was a buy on EU at 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock. It was this one, it was this trade. Beautiful trade. When you see this chart right here, what do you see? Maybe pause the video for yourself and what do you see? How I could have taken this trade? Why did I take this trade and how did I execute it? Pause for video right now and get into that. Okay, if you did that, as you can see, this candle right here and these candles right here, a lot of bullish momentum. So at this point we knew, okay, we are on a trend continuation from this bullish trend. We broke these highs, we broke these highs. So yes, we are in a bullish trend continuation. The only thing we need to do is to break these highs right now. So the probability is higher that we break these highs instead of these lows. So we're on a bullish trend and we take a buy. As you can see right here, we have a fair value gap. And this is something Amanti asked me um, actually yesterday. If you have a fair value gap like this, but it already got tapped in, is it still valid? I don't know what like the code is for it, if it is still valid or not, but in my opinion, it is. Because you will still have a fair value gap right here. This fair value gap has not been entered in. You need to realize that this will be a fair value gap like this on maybe a 20 minute time frame or maybe a 25 minute time frame so don't stare too blindly on this if it got tapped in but there is still room there is still a gap in the market it is still valid okay i'll zoom into the five minute maybe for like a more of a precision um, explanation this was the gap that was still not filled or was still not tapped in so this was my entry this was my trade i took it right here entry right here that was a perfect beautiful entry and my stop loss was probably just below the imbalance candle. And then I probably just targeted these highs. I can't really remember, I can't see it on my forex ones. I probably just targeted these highs. And let's see what happens. As you can see, beautiful trade. 
beautiful trades. The next one was a GBP JPY trade. As you can see, I removed all of them. I just made a decision for myself to only focus on EURUSD and EURGPY. I have the best win rate on those of those pairs. So I thought to myself, why expose myself to more risk on pairs that I'm not good at? This was also the 25th of October. Um, we also took a buy position on GJ, just, just after London Open. You can probably see why I took this trade, um, as I love volume, I love volume in the market. Right here, this is my entry, 910. If you can see already why I took this trade, purely based on this fair value gap. So you have this fair value gap, we are on an uptrend, we created a higher low right here. We took out this high, we took out this high, or we made equal highs. And this move was enough for me in order to say, yes, we are going bullish. So I entered this trade right here. This was probably my entry. And this was probably my stop loss. Then my take profit, I think was around here. I'm not gonna lie. Let's see what happens. Bam, we get hit. That's what I like. I like trades that get hit instantly. I don't like drawdown. I don't like like sitting in my stop loss zone and just fucking around right there. I like getting tapped in and getting tapped out as soon as possible. Okay, so that was my trade. Okay, then the next trade was on GBP AUD also a buy position and also on the 25th of October. I got. I remember that I planned these trades, I planned GJ and I planned GA um, and I planned these together. I planned these together and they got tapped in together because Pound is the leading currency in this one. So they move quite similarly and um, not, not really actually, but if Pound has like really good movements behind it, it will affect GA and GJ both. So we got into a buy position at 10 past nine. As you can see, price got into the zone right here as an order block. It reacted really good to it. We started creating higher highs, higher lows with a lot of bullish momentum behind it. Um, so this was my entry right here. Fair value gap. Bam. My entry was right here. My stop loss was underneath the imbalance candle probably. Then my take profit was, I think, around here. These highs. And let's see what happens. Bam. It got hit. This was also a really nice 2.7 R trade. Okay, I'll go over a couple of more trades, then I will talk a little bit about the psychology and then I think I'll call it quits because I think this video is already taking a lot of time. I don't know if you've noticed, but these trades are like a lot of time apart. I really took my time for this challenge because you have. You have the time to take um, in order to pass the verification challenge. And I'm seeing that I was taking cells the whole day already. Okay, we need to go actually a little bit further than this. Oh my god, I remember this trade. Damn, I didn't know I, I re-entered this one. Okay, what happened was, as you can see, we took out these lows. So we created a lower low. You have a fair value gap right here. My entry, right here. My stop loss was right here. I was so furious about this. Um, what I should have done was this. I should have done this. But I was so furious about this, man, you, you, can't, you can't believe it. And that's what I was talking about. With placing the stop loss above the imbalance candle, you get scenarios like this. This was, by the way, based on, look at this gap right here. And my philosophy was that it needs to be filled. So my take profit was also right here. As I've, I've showed you this trade in a video, I believe. But yeah, really, really crazy trade. Then I re-entered this one. I re-ended this one at 11.45, but the next candle. Okay, the next candle, bam. Okay, I did not re-enter at 11.45. I just realized that there is a time difference between these because we went into winter time. <laughs> I actually entered this at 12.45. I was looking at this and thought, how is this possible? I entered at 11.45, but I think it is the time difference. So let's go a little bit further. Let's go a little bit further. Then 12.45 is also impossible. What the heck? Okay, something is definitely off with these timings. I don't know where I entered. But maybe there was a fair value gap on a lower time frame. Um, then I put my stop loss around here probably. And yeah, as I said, my take profit was at these lows from this gap right here. And as you can see, price went straight down to it. To the T actually. It was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful trade. I exited at 1530 or 1630. At 16.30. Man, I'm so confused with these times right now. At 16.30, so I exit this right here. Bam. So that's my trade. Yes, this was better. Yes, this was better. Because I um, calculated the gap and I calculated in this area. So I saw this as the 
low of the gap. So this was a trade. It was a really, really nice trade. I'll go over one more. Um, man, there are, there are so many good trades still left. I'll go over EJ. Okay, I realize now why I can't find my entries on this trade. These charts are actually using a different broker than I use. <laughs> it is on the Oanda chart. Um, I always use the Forex.com chart. That explains why I don't see fair value gaps where I took my trades. I was so confused, man. And I, was, I was searching like half an hour from how could this happen? If, if I, do I have the timing off? Does my have the timing off? What is going on? Anyway, we had like a uh, really nice trades on EuroJPY still. Um, so it was at 14.45 was this trade. So there was probably a fair value gap right here. Um, on the forex.com charts, this was my trade, something like this, um, based on this low right here, as you can see. I can't show you this really well on um, on these charts um, unless I take the other broker with it, but I think this video is already long enough. My plan is to scale up my funding accounts significantly next year and also to take you guys with me in this process. So I think I might link in my effects book to a new challenge, like a new 100k, new 200k challenge. And then you can see exactly the trades I take and exactly how I executed them. Um, I might also actually give you guys like an investor password or something like that, because I'm just fully transparent. I don't care, you can see everything that I take. Maybe you can learn something from it or we can discuss about it in the Discord or on YouTube. Okay, my psychology during this, during this challenge. As I said, I was in a drawdown period, but it also didn't really bother me because this was like a account just for YouTube and it is just a 20k. It is nothing. You have to think about it. The money that you lose is actually the money that you invested into other accounts. And how much you are going to be influenced by your psychology depends on how much that money means to you. So this 20K was like 125, it means nothing. And if 125 is a lot for you, you should not be taking challenges right now. You should be working a job, saving up some money, and then you can try this out. I remember when I was just starting out trading and I was just starting out, or I was just starting out funding challenges, I was already going for the 100K challenges immediately. And back then 500 was a lot of money. It is still a lot of money. Or like a thousand for like a 200K account. That is so much money, man. So imagine how differently your psychology will be influenced by that number instead of the 125. So that is really important that you choose an account that you can handle and you choose an account where you can afford to lose the money. Second thing is that it's really important that you just follow your plan, you just follow your risk management plan. The verification is no different than a challenge. You have just have to double of the time, see it that way. You have double of the time, so actually you have unlimited time because you're not going to reach it 60 days in most cases. Use that time and don't rush it. You only need 5%, that's an easy job. By the way guys, if you want to be part of the closest trading community on YouTube, be sure to join my link in the description for my discord server i'll be dropping trade breakdowns analysis and we can go over trades together we can chat with each other and help each other to become a profitable consistent trader okay guys i hope you enjoyed this video if you have any questions about it if you have any comments about it please leave it in the comments down below if you enjoyed the video don't forget to leave a like down below if you're new to the channel don't forget to subscribe and i will see you in the next one bye bye guys